Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to be looking at a new piece. This is uh, Chorcelesh. She's a big bad dragon. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So right now, you can see I'm uh, just doing some blocking, trying to get a shape of the dragon. Uh, I'm working off the back, a uh, nice gradient in the back, which I tend to do. And I'm just trying to figure out what pose I want him to be in. Now, the notes are pretty loose for this piece. Pretty much he's just a big baddie. So I proposed the idea that he's going to be really big, like colossal big. Uh, the idea being that he is just, uh, in game turns anyway, he's supposed to be the, the biggest, baddest dragon. Um, I guess if he's out for like three turns or something, the game's over and you win, or you lose if you're the humans. Um, so I wanted him to be so epically large and terrifying that there's really no doubt that uh, when he comes out, it's it's over. So uh, I kind of put forward the idea that this dragon's big, like really big, like bigger than a city big, and that he's going to be perched on this giant kind of rocky outcrop with castles on it, overlooking the city that he is, you know, about to destroy. So uh, as you can see, I'm starting to just sort of put in some, sh uh, put in some shapes for the city, and uh, I've kind of got a nice blocking going on for Chorcelesh himself. I'm just figuring out the wings. I want the wings to be big, too, kind of this, like, blot out the sun monstrous thing. Right now I'm doing some uh, aerial perspective and some little detail work. Now it's tough because the scale is so, oh, a little liquefied to fix things. The scale is so massive, I mean like so massive, that uh, you have to imagine that each scale in his body is bigger than a house. I mean it's bigger than a city block possibly. So uh, I have to be careful not to get too detailed, but uh, you know, pretty much just work in what's necessary, but keep his scale apparent through uh, comparative items or objects in the frame, and you know, lots of aerial perspective on him. The idea of being that he's just huge. Uh, part of the inspiration from this came from uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, obviously. Um, the city is a little bit like Gondor, in that there's this big massive rocky outcrop but i mixed it up a little bit it's it's not a one-to-one -one. there's no you know tower and circles uh circular walls um and some of the other uh inspiration came from magic the gathering um there's one creature i can't remember his name right now uh i think it's progenitus who is this huge hydra and the way it was painted is really brilliant it's not up close at all it's really distant but it just looks massive and it looks really cool because it just – it looks almost like something you could run into and see in the wild and just kind of, you know, crap your pants. It's 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 terrifyingly big. Um, anyway, so right now I'm just sort of putting these towers in. And you can get an idea. Those are castle towers. So this guy is big. Uh, also, I had to keep in mind that the gout of fire coming out of his mouth is probably going to be about the size of a castle tower, if not a keep. So when I normally do fire, I add lots of little like uh, undulations and little twists and eddies in it. But um, just because of the scale of this fire, I can't really do that um, because you know fire when it's really big and viewed from a distance, it just looks like kind of like a gas, like a part uh, particulate mass being blown around. Um, so I had to keep that in mind while I was working, and uh, you'll you'll see as as time grows on. So right now I'm just sort of touching up some details, helping to refine the outline. Um, Chorcel is just starting to come to shape a little bit. Just cleaning up the edges of the wings, breaking up some of the brush patterns and making a smoother gradient here and there. Doing some uh, scales and shapes. Like I said, um, here we go. I'm adding some perspectives, some aerial perspective. There would be a lot of dust kicked up from something this big just sitting on your house and crushing everything around it. So um, aerial perspective is really useful, especially in this sense, because you give some depth to the guy. You know where he is. Uh, here, was, here I was just fiddling around trying to get some buildings in there. 
and he's got you know, he's got his tail wrapped around the rocky outcrop. It's actually funny watching this for me because I know what the end product looks like, and it's very different from this. Um, so up here, I wanted to add some some mid ground and foreground city just to break up. You know, I didn't want it to be just this massive urban sprawl. I wanted to have some noticeable features, um, and I actually was inspired a little bit by uh, Italy and Rome there you know Rome is a very large city and it's mostly kind of these little streetways and shops and stuff and uh, you know these houses built in stone but uh occasionally you'll get these massive hills with like a little cathedral or a castle or something you know some building uh, sticking out of them so I was kind of going for that look um, to help define the scale here, I'm painting in a little tower in the foreground, and it's not a very complex tower. It's almost like a spinneret, um, but uh, not a spinneret. What's it called? I can't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a little tower in the foreground. Nothing too massive, but I mean, it, it's you know maybe two floors. So just adding more details, helping to define the edge. Oh, I'm sorry. The word I was looking for is minaret. Yeah. A little bit of a brain fart there. Spinnerets, for those who don't know, are those little things on spiders that weave together the silk. Minarets are the uh, towers prevalent in Middle Eastern architectural uh, architectural style they're really commonplace on mosques um, the best example I can think of is the Hagia Sophia in uh, Constantinople or Istanbul so here I'm painting in some castles in the distance and uh, I started throwing these little archways in um, I don't I didn't really define whether they were natural or whether they were sort of built up but uh, I kind of like them they're just very dramatic you know they're a little bit like uh, solitude in skyrim or you know like a i don't know they look they look kind of magical like they shouldn't really be built that way or they shouldn't be able to sustain their weight but they do now at first this rock uh the big one that he was sitting on was just this massive thing and that's fine but um as time progressed i started adding more details to it, it made it sort of like a almost like uh like an adobe cave system um like something you might find in the southwestern united states um so you'll you'll see it not quite yet but coming up here i'm just adding more details um adding you know little levels to the city and you can see i added sort of like a you know aqueduct or a, a viaduct or something Nope, there I go. I'm starting to add them. So rather than just have one big solid piece of rock, I sort of made it look like it was um, uh, supported by a couple natural columns of stone. And then, like there maybe were caves or something underneath there. Some more buildings. Oh, this was tough. So I, because of the number of foreground and midground and background layers, uh, what I mean is the distance and space they were. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, I started running out of different shades to work in, just because like, you know, the difference between light gray and light light gray is not that much. But you can't, you know. In order for aerial perspective and uh, perspective to look natural, you actually have to have the objects in the foreground be, you know, not necessarily darker, but definitely in focus more and higher, uh, harder contrast, etc. So uh, that little tower with the walkway to the right was was a little bit of a pain. Actually, I believe most of the stuff that's painting being painted in right now is not going to be there in the end, if I recall correctly. I actually ended up painting it out. Which was sort of funny, because it went from being this urban sprawl to this sort of city built on the Grand Canyon. But uh, it's cool. I'm not complaining. 
And neither was the client. He thought it was he thought it was cool. So as long as he's happy. Oh, I had to add a background, so I added some mountains. These mountains are a little bit too steep. Um, now, if you know uh, some stuff about geology, you'll know that the, uh, the steepness of a mountain usually is indicative of how old it is. So if you ever go to like South America, um, you'll see that the Andes and the mountains around Peru are very, very steep, extremely steep. They have very thin, narrow points. They almost have like ridges on them. Um, and if you compare it to like the Appalachians or another older mountain range, you'll see the Appalachians are very kind of humble. They're kind of smooth and round. They're not, they don't really have these great, you know, sharp peaks. And that's just because they're so old. They've been eroded for so long that they're not, um, they're just not as, I guess, uh, I don't want to say potent, but they're just not as uh, angular anymore. They've just been worn down. So uh, the reason I bring that up is that uh, even though geological time is not comparable to human time, um, I was thinking that if this was a really old city, as would be fit a city built into the middle of a cliff like that, um, that the mountains would be a little bit less intense, a little less steep. But uh, I don't, well, we'll see what happens. Right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of painting in and not really painting truly in, more of hinting at the fact that there's a clouds and the idea being that he's so big that his gout of flame is actually going into the clouds, um, which is sort of a cool idea. A little more uh, aerial perspective, just breaking up the outline that's further away, lighting it up. What I'm doing now is adding striations of cloud. The idea being that the more compact the striations are, the further away they are. Oh, I guess we're in coloring. So I generally start my coloring with a gradient um, just to work over. And I actually did this one a little bit differently where I jumped right into the multiply layer, as you can see. So what I'm doing is I'm just darkening it up uh, with, I think it was like a bluish color like a light blue. And the thing with multiplying is uh, you can control, there's actually a lot of ways you can control your brush stroke. You can use uh, opacity, flow, you can even modulate with, with uh, multiply layers anyway. You can modulate the brightness of the actual swatch you're using. The brighter it is, the less opaque it will appear when you leave a brush stroke. Um, so yeah, there's a lot you can do. What I was doing here was uh, using a very, very light pale yellow and just picking out um, the foreground and midground. Uh, the idea being that the city is made out of like a white stone or a pale stone and the rocks are made of a similar type of quartz or something, maybe sandstone. Probably not sandstone, but a pale stone of some kind. Um, and then I just used this, a light green for the mounds in the back and nothing um, nothing too saturated like that don't worry that's gonna get fixed but uh, the idea being that there was just sort of different tones um, going on here uh, the sky became blue obviously as you can see and uh, that had to be fixed up and use a little bit of a mask to fix it now what I'm doing is I'm trying to paint in the sky behind it uh, just to fix where his wing connects to his body Oh, time for some color dodging on the uh, flame and clouds. People say I like painting fire. It's true, I do. But uh, I think I'm ready for a little bit of break of a break from fire for a while. I've, uh, I've been painting these fire faction paintings a lot lately. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they all have fire in them. Yep, I can't think of a single one that doesn't. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going back with a color dodge and just doing some rim lights, little highlights kind of around. They're not true rims. They're, I guess they're just really just highlights, but little highlights here and there in the midground and foreground to sort of like pick out where the rooftops would be, add more uh, depth. Realism. Excuse me. 
a long day. So here we go. Just uh, picking out the castle details. And it's cool. I like that the castles are, you know, they're like discrete castles littered around the city. I think it looks nice. Kind of, I don't know, it actually reminds me a lot when I was when I was working on it, I was thinking this too. It reminds me a lot of the early paintings of Rome. And what I mean is like not classical paintings, but sort of post Renaissance when they started like rediscovering Rome and uh, excavating. Um, I don't know, I was just reminded of it when I was working on these. They have, uh, there are some great paintings from back in the day where, uh, you know, there's like giant tracks of aqueduct that are somewhat exposed. This looks like dinosaur bones almost. Adding little crenellations to the foreground to give you a sense of scale. As you can imagine, there are no crenellations visible past the midpoint just because they'd be so tiny, they'd be imperceptible to the eye at, this, at that range. We do a little bit of bounce light. Just add some more highlights. This was tough for me because I couldn't decide how detailed I wanted Chor Celesh to actually be. Um, the issue being, you know, he's really far away. Actually, he's really far away. If you look at the buildings around him compared to the tower in the foreground, you get an idea how he's really far. Like he's not close at all to the camera. You know, he's possibly like a mile away or like half a mile away and he's still that big so um if you can imagine the crenellations are invisible at that range then how many real details on him would be visible type of a thing um so that was something i actually did struggle with i mean each of his scales is like you know bigger than the face of your house type of a thing what i'm doing now is just adding some more atmospheric lighting and bounce And you can see those caves are really starting to develop now. They're not just hinted at. They're actually a little bit more strongly represented. It makes the rock more interesting. There's just It looks sort of like a ship with little legs or something. As you can see here, I'm just adding some little layers of, uh, you know, just little layers of distance and detail on these things. And a second layer, because obviously the more layers, the more detail, the more realistic it will look. So I just wanted to make it look like there was, you know, a lot of alleys and streets up there. differentiating the, the uh, rear parts of the city. What's kind of funny is in the back, there's this giant rectangle just sort of sitting there on the top right of the screen right now. You can see it. Um, it would be huge. That building would be massive. I mean, incalculably huge. Oh, bye-bye. And here I decided to switch the, uh, <laughs> flip the canvas. I'm just adding a little bit of debris falling off the tip. Oh, if this is the part I think it is, um, no, oh, no, this is me fixing the perspective and uh, moving his eye and moving it up a little bit. There's, I think this is the beginning of, there's a long section of me editing Chor Slush's face. It goes on for a very long time, and I believe this is where it starts. Yeah, so first I opened the jaw a little bit more. I wanted it to look, before it was sort of like he was exhaling. I want it to look more like he was roaring in triumph, like conquering the city. So I had to add a little bit of a three quarters perspective to uh, his neck, kind of you know define it a little bit. Here we've 
I'm uh, accentuating the flame, making it more intense. And uh, you know, his mouth is so big. Like the top of his mouth is, or his bottom jaw, I should say. The top of his bottom jaw would be, I don't know, like a block at least. So uh, if, as you can imagine, there'd probably be like, it would have its own weather. So you can see there's like little eddies of flame that are engulfing it. Here I'm just adding some more spiky bits, cleaning up some of those uh, highlights on the edges of the wing, the little rim lights. Fixing, fixing, fixing. I know, I have a kind of a weird way of painting, as I've learned from comments and people talking to me about stuff. Um, I do some planning, but I've sort of stopped. <laughs> I think planning goes more hand in hand with heavy line work, really, than the way I paint at this point. I use a lot of the push pull, uh, you know, a little liquify tool. I paint over stuff I don't like. I edit things out. Okay, this is where it gets fun. So I could not decide how I wanted Troy Slush's head to look. And I had the same problem on Ash Eater where dragon horns are just, I never know exactly how they're going to look. I think they did an amazing job in, you know, Skyrim or movies like Dragonheart. They just, the dragons look so cool. But uh, I just never can seem to make it in a way that I think looks good enough. So I tried adding lots of horns. The idea being that maybe it was like a crown of horns. But he ended up looking more like a pterodactyl. Then I thought, well, okay, maybe if I turn the horns out a little bit, like kind of like cattle or something, or a goat. But uh, that didn't last either. Now here I am. I'm, I'm hiding some. I, I originally had the idea of having him have vents in his neck, kind of like a furnace. But uh, I got rid of it in the end. What I just did was I very quickly added aerial perspective all on one side of his neck, so that you can tell that his neck has sort of this uh, long, not furrow, but ridge down it. Actually, this part was fun, because it kind of reminded me of Rodan from the Godzilla movies when I was a kid. Um, and I always loved those, and they're, so, I, I like painting giant monsters. All right, yep, liquify, messing around, didn't like it. Added a little bit of aerial perspective here to make the horn kind of blend out a little bit. It looks good, but it's not going to stay. Sorry. Sorry if you love that horn, because it is not going to stay. And as you can see, I got rid of the eye again. Oh, all right, so I gave him a little bit of a beak. Now he really looks like a pterodactyl. And I put little jets of flame coming out of his eye and his nostrils. I think for Chor Celeste, it's okay to have an eye that's sort of the Inferno magma eye, just because he's so massive, like he is a force of nature in himself. Uh, so I, made, I gave him this nice curved horn, but uh, yeah, it, it doesn't stay. So then, uh, for a little while, he looked like a chicken, a little bit, or, you know, a bird. So there he is, as a bird. And then I kind of got the idea of doing wingy type membranous uh fins on the side of his head sort of like a cobra so cobra's uh the, the hood of a cobra is actually its rib cage extended out and flattened which is sort of cool but uh i didn't go that far he just has these sort of fins that come off the side of his head and they look more like a kind of like a elizabethan collar and i sort of like the idea of you know royalty so uh, that's this is how it's going to end up looking eventually No, I did a nice job highlighting that, but the problem was that the mouth was too dark. So I had to go and fix the mouth, and that's what I will do. There we go, right now. Bump it up. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just super, super heated at this point. It's just so hot that it's white almost. And it's kind of cool. It reminds me of, like, the sun just, like, bleeding out. Also, I was watching some TV and being really careful to observe how fire looked on film. And it seems like fire is kind of one of two ways. It's either just red, like reddish-orange, or white. So I decided to go with kind of the white. I gave him some horns because um, I thought he needed something there. 
but uh, those are actually going to get modified in a second. Oh, I'm right now fixing the perspective on the rear wing using liquify. And uh, what am I doing now? I'm just fixing the edges here. Always fixing edges. That's part of the problem with using such broad strokes to begin with, is there's a lot of rendering later. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm fixing the uh, membranes around his head. And um, I, I realize that, yeah, so I'm fixing it now with liquify. So I realize that there's a little delay between what I'm saying um, because I actually start commenting and then it's going so fast that what I say doesn't seem like it's on time. And I believe that's how they stay. So now I'm doing some cloud work. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm zooming around like a madman. Oh, I added some little birds for perspective, uh, for uh, giving you an idea of how large things are. Here I'm adding, uh, some tumbling stones. Uh, I added some windows. So that's the window. Give you an idea of how big that building is. I didn't like this. Very nice windows. And then I uh, just copied that color and just started using it everywhere else. And the idea is if if the structure is so far away that that window doesn't show up, then it works. Pretty much, you know, fixes itself. Fixing, fixing, fixing. A little detail works here and there. Just straightening out some of the lines and stuff. There, I was painting in some birds over that tower. Uh, this is where it gets fun. So I started adding other dragons for reference and scale. And this guy, you should probably, if you've seen the um, Ash Eater piece, he's about the size of an Ash Eater, to give you an idea of how big that dragon is. So uh, he's he's not small. I mean, that's a castle. Or at least a heavily fortified home. So we've got a little gout of fire. And then I... Uh, Painted in another dragon over here. This guy is much closer and therefore much bigger. I couldn't settle on how I wanted him to look, but uh, at first, when it comes to the neck, you'll see I, I couldn't figure it out quite right away. Um, what was kind of cool also is it turns out that the way this card or this monster works is that if you have at least two other dragons out, you win the game. And I didn't know that when I did this, but uh, my client was actually pleasantly surprised that I included exactly two dragons and not more or less. Or more or fewer, I should say. Um, because uh, I guess it just works really well with the way the mechanics of the game work. All by chance. Imagine that. So this proves it's never too late to paint something in. Right now I'm just sort of painting a dragon, using some I'm sampling around for the t colors that I need to use. Eventually I ended up going with the color dodge just because it was easier. I love doing rim lights on wings. They just look so much cooler with them. I enjoy good lighting, let's put it that way. What I'm doing now is I'm just adding a little bit of subsurface scattering and transparency to the wings. Because, you know, they're membranous, they shouldn't be opaque. Here I'm diffusing the intensity. And then I'm doing a little bit of fire. No tower is safe from dragon fire. Just pumping up the uh, intensity. Now I'm doing some nice little interior highlights from the flame to give you, a, you know, an idea of the dragon's textures. He had a green eye at first. I think it became bluish by the end. I tweaked it a little bit. Here we go, adding some uh, aerial perspective just locally to kind of differentiate the dragon. Fixing some of the, I flipped it around and I noticed the composition was a little bit off there, so I'm just 
fixing that up a little bit. Doing some adjustment layers, of course. Here I'm uh, lightening the tail, and it's hard to keep up. Sorry, it's going so fast at this point. Ah, adding some bounce, uh, not some bounce, I'm sorry, some overlay layers here to just give it a little bit more oomph. Look at me go. Adding some smoke. I don't want it to be too strong, just sort of faint hinting of smoke. And uh, it looks like I'm done. I think I saved, yeah. Oh, no, just kidding. I had to get my uh, my signature. I went with a very subtle signature. I usually do like an, an intense, fiery one, but I, I kind of wanted people to focus on the piece more. There's a lot going on. I don't need a big, blotchy signature. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to let you guys look at the finished piece for a couple seconds, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of fast. Um, that's what speeding up 10 times does, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless, and uh, you can look forward to more videos, uh, more paintings soon, and uh, hopefully you'll come by and check it out. Thanks again. Bye.